Welcome to Mocktails with Sarah Morgan. I'm Sarah, Head of Nutrition Innovation at Routine and a clinical nutritionist. Today, we have Lauren Sesselman with us. She is an Olympic bronze medalist and recently retired from 15 years as a professional soccer player. I'm envious as bad moms soccer player. I play every Tuesday night with my ladies. Yeah. <laughs> and she is now a businesswoman, entrepreneur. She is a model and actress and also an advocate for mental and physical health. Lauren, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to be here. And I heard you just turned 40. I did. I turned 40 in August. That's incredible. Well, we should cheers. To Let's them. do this. Cheers to 40. So this is routine stress drink. It is amazing. It's an adaptogenic drink mm. mix and it's designed to balance your cortisol okay. and help you feel well even when life throws things your way, you know? And I'm going to be chugging this right now. I like mm. to say, say goodbye to all those woes because yeah. this stuff doesn't. Well, tell me what it's been like to turn 40. It's been interesting. Um, I'm a little bit more in tune with my body, which has been great, but I've also been noticing so many different things. You know, the gray hair is starting and a lot more time. My energy levels are just kind of all over the place. My cortisol levels. I, But I am becoming more in tune with my body, understanding it a little bit more. I like that attitude towards health mm -hmm. because I think that takes us really far in terms of being a student of ourselves as our body changes and we really address the different mm -hmm. needs we have at different stages of life. Yeah. So you recently had an injury. Tell me about that. I did. I've had a couple different injuries throughout my career. I had my head cracked open a, a bunch of times and just oh. kind of starting to feel the effects now that the, you know, the adrenaline has kind of dropped a little bit and I got my head checked and um, I dealt with depression. And so that's why I'm such a, you know, huge um, advocate for mental health and talking about suicide and all of that. So there is very much a correlation between head injuries, tra traumatic brain injuries and depression mm -hmm. because of the neurochemistry of the brain, how it changes. And it's not really something I think that is still addressed properly, mm -hmm. even in professional sports. So we're getting there. Yeah. But um, I think it's more common with athletes than we realize. Yeah. Because of the struggle there. Something you just said that was interesting that I'm kind of like going through right now is definitely the, the sleeping. Mm -hmm. Like I don't sleep at all and I, I go in waves and it's just, it's, it's, it's so hard on my body. I didn't even know that it was related to the gut, like through, through concussion. So that's something that I need to like yeah. tap into a little bit. Well, we can fix it. Yeah. It's all fixable. That's, yeah. the, that's the positive thing. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of times we think about stress as physiological or psychological, there's chemical stress. But there's the physical stress is really interesting because it can be a lack of sleep. It could be maybe you're pulling long hours at work, but it can also be injuries. Mm -hmm. If we look at the literature, psychological stress is a stress that we're least able to adapt to mm -hmm. as humans. We just don't like whether it's evolutionary or the mechanisms in our body, we just can't deal with those stressors. So you think about physical stress and then even as an athlete, uh, and, and now going into being a businesswoman, an entrepreneur, you have psychological stress, right? And all these different stressors co compound on each other in terms of what we deal with in our modern world. Mm -hmm. And I think it's really important as we get older, right, going to our 40s, 50s as females, that we have some new strategies yeah. in terms of how we find that balance, how we help our bodies adapt to all these different stressors that are going on. So it's, it's a really important thing. I would love to hear, have you ever experimented with adaptogens? Do you know what those are? I am not too familiar. I think it's funny because I, I'm from Green Bay, Wisconsin. So like nobody talks about those yeah. things there, you know? Yeah. Like yeah. I grew up on cheese and meat and uh -huh. then you move to California and it's like a whole different thing and everyone's throwing different things at you. But I've heard a lot of different stuff about, you know, adaptogens and, and mushrooms even too, like helping with you know the depression and stuff like that so that's something i'm trying to explore a little bit i haven't really tapped into it yet but i want to learn more about yeah. and just becoming more in tune with my body as i said because before when i was playing everybody was like helping me telling me what to do so i just did it right and yeah. now i really have to sit back and i'm like oh okay well what's going on in my body and like learn about myself because before i was just doing what people told me to do yeah. now you're in the driver's seat now i'm in the car. driver's seat i'm like okay i need to get this check and i need to do this i need to do this and it's yeah. like 
it's crazy, especially hitting this, and I want to have kids, I want to have a family, and all that stuff too. So I'm starting to think of all those things. But that's the added stress as well. Is like, oh, you're 40, you need to have yeah. kids. You need, you know, you're still in that transition phase of what you're gonna do with your life, you know. So um, athletes go through. I mean, everyone goes through that, but athletes. Um, specifically go through that transition from playing when you're at this ultimate high and now you're at this low and it's like who am I what yes. am I doing what's my purpose what's my why so yes. um, I would like to learn a lot more about adaptogens and maybe how that can like kind yeah. of curtail that and like help me a little bit so. well I have a couple thoughts one a simple way to think about an adaptogen is when we experience stress we our bodies are designed to rise to the occasion mm -hmm. right so it's gonna rise to the stress and then the goal is to always come back to balance and we want that homeostasis. So adaptogens help us deal with a stressor and come back to balance faster than our bodies could do on their own. That's the simplest way. It helps us optimize our um, stress response. What's really interesting is as you th talk about being 40 and you talk about some of the things that you're dealing with as well as fertility, one of the things that we miss as women is dealing with our stress, balancing our stress response is really important for fertility. The reason for that is progesterone is the calming hormone, but it's also the pregnancy hormone. And cortisol is your wakeful hormone. We think about it as a stress hormone, and it is, but it's the big one that rises in the morning. It helps you like, you know, feel ready to take on your day. It runs your metabolic processes. It's anti-inflammatory. It's why you get cortisone shots in your knee, you know, like, oh, I have pain relief for a little while. So what happens is if your body needs more cortisol because you're under stress, it actually makes it from progesterone. Okay. And this is something we don't really talk about a lot. So if you need a lot of cortisol, you're really stressed out for these different reasons, you're actually gonna deplete your progesterone. And so a lot of women who are dealing with infertility issues or as you get into your later 30s, early 40s, it's a hormone that first starts to decline. So one of the simplest ways that you can really keep yourself in great hormonal balance is you balance your cortisol and it will actually help to optimize your progesterone. So, cheers. No, cheers to that. Let's, <laughs> Let's balance our cortisol, baby. <laughs> right? <laughs> All right, so I'm curious, when you were dealing with depression, mental health issues, mm -hmm. obviously they looked at your brain, there was some history of you know, structural changes related to the trauma. What's really interesting is 50% of individuals who are newly diagnosed with depression have altered cortisol levels. They, so they never talked about that with me, so I had no idea. They kind of threw a few supplements at me, and they were just like, oh, just do this, and jump, jump in the hyperbaric chamber, And but we never really like dove that deep into it, so like this is really interesting for me. Yeah, and I think it's, you know, as we talk about mental health, your passion for mental health, which I totally align with, I think one of the big missing pieces is cortisol and looking at cortisol because we have this daily rhythm that it goes up in the morning which helps us get out of the uh, bed and like ready to take on our day and not hit the snooze a million times and we want we're excited right like we want to go take on the day and whatever tasks we have to do it naturally goes down in the afternoon sometimes too far for some people of imbalance which is why you're like oh I have the afternoon slump like I need a bunch of caffeine or, or you or crave, nap. yeah. Nap. I always take a nap and yeah. I'm like, there's something off. Yeah. Yes, yes. And that's a really classic sign that potentially your cortisol is a little more imbalanced as you go throughout your day. You can also crave salt and sugar. Sugar is my biggest downfall, I would say. And I, But I've been craving it a lot more than usual, but I can just tell like everything is off. So yeah, that's yeah. like a big thing. Yeah, and it's, and again, it's instead of the shame of oh, I, you know, like I, I crave sugar, something's wrong with me. The way I encourage people to think about it is it's a clue to something mm -hmm. else that's potentially imbalanced. And our cortisol helps us run our metabolic pathways, mm -hmm. keep things in balance. So if our cortisol is in balance, it's harder for us to stay on track even with healthy eating. And then what's really interesting with sleep, right? Because this is a big yeah. problem that you said you're facing right now is your cortisol should be at the lowest point of the day mm -hmm. before bed. Oh, okay. But what's really interesting, have you measured your cortisol? 
we? I ha not yet. Okay, we got to do that because I want to. I want to see your pattern because it's important to not only see like morning, but you really want to be able to track that pattern yeah. throughout the day, so you can see where those imbalances lie. A lot of people will have cortisol that's high at bedtime, mm -hmm. and it's a wakeful hormone, right? So you head to bed and it's like I'm not tired yeah I feel I like I let's let's go do something yeah. right it's like the night owl side of you kicks in and some of that can be bright lights and you know the timing of eating even exercising mm -hmm. too late can stimulate too much cortisol and then what happens is you don't get your sleep hormone to increase you want it to melatonin to increase around at 10 p.m. and then that gives you that kind of relaxation restfulness throughout the night mm -hmm. Uh, which is really important when you're healing your brain, right? Mm -hmm. Because sleep is one of the most critical pieces of brain healing and repair. Yeah. And it's really common with head injuries to not be able to sleep well. So when you start to deplete your cortisol levels, you also have other hormones that regulate mineral levels. And there's another hormone called aldosterone that helps control electrolyte balance. And once you start uh, to deplete these, it's not only magnesium, it's potassium, it's yeah. sodium chloride as well, you'll start to have issues like restless leg. Well, this is the thing too, like even when I was playing, I was always in the red, but I was drinking, you know, what we needed to be drinking, yeah. but I'm not like either retaining the water or hydrated or whatever. So I don't know what else that could be attributed to as well, but I just feel like I'm never hydrated and yeah. I don't know how to change that as well. Yeah, so the more we balance cortisol, so cheers. Let's drink some more to that. <laughs> hydration. Up. Yes, actually it does impact your hydration status and not mm. just water, but also all of your electrolytes that are key for driving where water goes inside of your cells. So I'm basically a mess, you're saying? So this is, <laughs> we're gonna say goodbye to our woes. Yes, let's go. So what are your favorite things you do to help manage your stress? You know, exercise is kind of like my happy place, as I said. Um, and so when I was going through the depression and I wasn't doing that, you know, you notice things like that. So the things I like to do, um, you know, I got a little bit more into meditation. Um, I really wasn't into it when I was playing so much. I would kind of just like be one with myself and just put music on. And now I kind of take more time out of my day. I really have like a routine that I go through and it really helps me. And I love to read. I love murder mysteries Ooh, yeah so I like, I like to I like to just relax with a good book um, or go for a walk those are good I do my hot grandma walk yeah that's what I, that's I, what like I call that. it my hot I'm gonna start walk. calling mine that <laughs> yeah so the, it's interesting you bring that up too because research has shown that you can actually lower your cortisol and bring it into balance in a better more faster way taking a walk outside oh, really? than taking a nap really yeah I do notice that like if I wake up stressed and I go for that walk, I just, it just, honestly, I put the music on and I'm just like slow pace and I'm just like, wow, the nature, I think just being out inside in the nature and getting the vitamin D and stuff like that too has been really helpful. And it sounds like you're exercising with your circadian rhythm. Mm -hmm. This is that 24 hour sleep wake cycle. Mm -hmm. So your cortisol is naturally higher in the morning, which is a great time to work out mm -hmm. in terms of the motivation, and even your body's physiology of when you're gonna feel best with it, which is really cool to hear that you're yeah. doing that. So I have to do it right away in the morning, <laughs> otherwise, otherwise you know, I get sidetracked yeah. and, then I, and then I don't do it, but yeah. yeah that's great. Yeah. So I think a lot of women, men too, mm -hmm. at our age are really lonely. Yeah. Actually, I was just talking about this with one of my friends the other day, and I was like, especially since now that I've done playing and then when I moved out here, like just trying to meet new people, but I was like, I feel more lonely than I ever have. And I'm like, I need to change that, you yeah. know? So that's, yeah. And it's a big way that I think we, it's a discharge. I like to think about like, what are the lightning rods to mm -hmm. discharge our stress? Some of them are negative, yeah. right? And mm -hmm. some of them are positive. And community is one of those really positive lightning rods, right? You had a really stressful week. There's maybe some hard things going on in your life, but you get around your friends. You get around people you trust. You can talk to them about it. Not yep. that it's like Debbie Downer, woe yeah. is me the whole time, but it helps kind of lift you up a little bit yeah. and put things in context more. Yeah. So yeah, I'm, I'm a big fan of community. I also love, don't you think we don't play enough as we get older? Well, I was just gonna say that actually, it's funny because I was like, what makes me happy too is I play soccer all the time still, or basketball, yeah. I'll go play 
tennis, pickleball, whatever, you know, but I'll take the with my community and but it's it's that happy place. So I, I always tell myself if I'm not having fun, I should you know, I shouldn't be doing it. So every day I try to do something that's fun and just kind of like I'm like I don't wanna like age and not be having fun, you know? So do you still play hockey a lot or I, I actually have taken up soccer. In my, I decided in my adult life to this learn a bad new mom sport. Soccer, right? I am a bad okay. mom soccer player. <laughs> I play on Tuesday night with a, just a very big mix of ladies. But the really cool thing is, one, it's been fun to play. Two, we've actually become friends. Yeah, it's like these strangers that just came together. And you know, all of us have gone through really interesting, hard things yeah. and good things in our life over the last few years. And we really support each other. Wait, so did you like the Mighty Ducks growing up? I oh yeah, quack, quack, yeah, quack, quack. 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 <laughs> I wish I would make a uh, like a women's movie. Yeah, uh, the, well, yeah. maybe that's like part of our inspiration. We should like yeah, make a fun, oh, a fun movie. You Cheers to that! Let's yeah. finish these drinks with you that. Could, you could produce a, a movie, a hockey, <laughs> soccer. Maybe it's a mix yeah. of both. Let's you know? do it. The a ladies. little love story thrown in there because I'm a <laughs> yeah, whole full right. romantic. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. So Lauren, as we wrap up. I would love for you to tell me, what does it mean to have vibrant health? Vibrant health to me, that means just, you know, feeling alive, feeling my best self every single day, putting my best foot forward and with a positive mindset. A lot of my friends are like, you're always so positive. And I was like, I don't know any other way. Can we share some Let's that? do That's it. That's a great definition, <laughs> vibrant health. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me. You. This was fun, so thank you. Is it okay to finish this? Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. It's really good. I was like, hey, the stress. bad mom soccer. Let's yeah, go. Yeah, I know, right? And it's and it's kicking in. We're yeah. feeling good. The rosemary adds that little like mm -hmm. that little touch of something, something. It was the great information. Like you're amazing. So well, I've so learned a lot today. So. <laughs>